Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy beginning of a completely new decade in the 20s. 2020 is super exciting. I wanted to open up this month's videos by addressing uh, 2020 and some of the more uh, common aspects that we're going to see about 2020, just so we're all a little bit more informed, okay? So to start off in regards to 2020, this is a very practical year. Um, I, I think that's that's what I would call 2020 just as a general summary. It's a very practical year, okay? And the reason for that is because we have a lot, a lot of earth energy, a lot of planetary energy going on in the sign of Capricorn. We have Jupiter, we have Saturn, we have eclipses, and we have quite a few eclipses this year too, by the way. We have the south node, we have Pluto going uh, all through the sign of Capricorn. So for those of us who like to make New Year's resolutions, this is a great year to actually carry those resolutions through. So you know how sometimes it is that we we have all these um, aspirations of all these things that we want to do, whether it be like a fitness routine or a diet or, um, you know, all these New Year's resolutions that we have. And you'll notice that sometimes throughout the year, um, those can kind of trail off or, or we can get sidetracked or, or whatever else. And, and so that way, sometimes uh, New Year's resolutions can kind of turn into a little bit of a, a joke after a while. This is really not a year where those New Year's resolutions are a joke. This is a year where you can actually um, have the willpower and the, and the steadfastness and the consistency to keep up with some of those things that you're wanting to bring into your life. Right at the end of 2019, and we're talking about December 25th and December 26th, we are going to have an eclipse in the sign of Capricorn that's kind of going to give us a little bit of a feel of what the upcoming year is going to be like. And it's just going to give us that extra push that we need to start some of those things that we've, you know, we've had in the, in the back of our mind um, that we've been wanting to do. Um, but for some reason there's been, oh, I don't have enough time or, uh, you know, like, oh, I can't really fit that into my schedule, or I don't have the motivation to do that, or that's not possible with my family's schedule and all this other going on for me to, to do that, to pursue that. Um, oh, I can't afford that. Um, you know, there's all these things, there's all these doubts been going on in our mind about why we can't pursue a goal or something that we've been really wanting to do, something that, that we know that would be good for us, right? Um, so this eclipse coming in on the on the 25th on the west coast and more on the east coast is going to be more like you know possibly um on on the 26th but right around there um some people are already feeling this energy i know i am and it's like that push to really um start something new and um get rid of any kind of self-doubt talk that we've been telling ourselves in regards to starting new goals in regards to starting to be motivated uh to take on certain um routines certain healthy routines and that's what 2020 is really about so when i call 2020 a practical year um it's about forming healthy boundaries healthy routines and and something that you're able to consistently do right something that's feasible something where you can do it on a daily basis right starting a, a new a new routine, a new cycle, and being consistent with it, putting in the hard work with it. So another mistake that we make in regards to New Year's resolutions is that we're so gung-ho about it. And I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Diet. <laughs> Diet is a huge um, New Year's resolution where people, you know, tend to start to fade out a little bit. Um, through throughout the year and and fail to be consistent with it and part of the reason that that is is because we go into it and we're too extreme 
we're too extreme about it, right? Uh, we want quick results. Um, we're so gung-ho about it that we just want to jump in and we take it too far to where it becomes unrealistic and unattainable. Okay, so I really want to caution you about that in the upcoming year, 2020. Um, like I said, I'm going to call 2020 the, the year of practical, you know, being practical, right? Doing something that's realistic, um, starting to change certain habits, uh, little things that you can do, little routines on a daily basis where, you know, it's, it's not obtainable, right? It's something that you can keep up with. It's something that you can continue to do and get yourself into good habits moving forward. Uh, really crucial, really crucial. And you know what? That also takes planning. Um, I, I would have to say that for those of you who are more kind of like fly by the seat of their pants, um, spontaneous, you know, go with the flow, let's just see what happens type of people, this might be a difficult year for you. This type of energy is asking you to, to focus on and to plan. And, and, and quite frankly, I think this is an excellent, excellent year to start out a new decade. Because if we're making healthy changes and we're thinking practically and we're slowly working towards our objectives, then that is a good foundation to start for what we want um, coming up for the next 10 years, okay? Um, so, so where do we see ourselves 10 years from now, okay? Uh, where do we want to be? What are some goals that we have? And what can we do on a daily basis? What kind of routines, what kind of changes um, can we make in our routines to slowly work towards achieving that goal. And that's really what it's about. Capricorn is really about consistency and putting in the work and putting in the time. And it's really obtainable this year in 2020. The other thing I think that's really important to bring up to you guys in regards to uh, 2020 is it's not a time to be frivolous, okay? It's not a time to be frivolous with money. If anything, it's a time to work on perhaps like saving money, um, paying off debt. I wouldn't suggest um, using uh, credit cards this year if you can prevent it. Um, I would consider if you can do it, um, possibly paying off debt if you can, paying off those credit cards. Um, I just wouldn't do a lot of acquiring of new debt this year. I just, um, this is a year more where you are working on being more self-sufficient, right? Um, instead of relying on uh, creditors uh, to be able to help you live the kind of life that you know you feel like you want to. This year is about working with what we already have, okay? So not necessarily about, you know, just, you know, being flamboyant and like a kid in a candy shop saying, oh, you know, I need a new vehicle or, you know, oh, I, I need this or I, I want this. Um, it's really about taking a look at what you have, being satisfied with what you have, being appreciative with what you have, and being able to use what you have and your current abilities to be able to produce something more. So there's also a lot of creativity that comes into this year when it comes down to that. So yeah, not a great year to be frivolous with money. And, and, and instead of living over and above our means, we need to think about even maybe living a, even a little bit below our means, right? Where can we save money on our finances? Where can we, um, you know, kind of, you know, nip and tuck a little bit? Um, can we start using coupons for grocery shopping, right? Right? What kind of extras are we getting in regards to groceries that we really don't need to get? Um, how can we save some money on some monthly bills, right? Are there ways that we can save money there? Um, just, you know, things like that. Can we afford to put even like $10 a month into a savings account? Anything is better than, than nothing. And I'm, I'm referring to myself in that way as well, because I have some kind of issue with saving money. It just like, you know, I'm just like, why? It, it seems like a waste, but it's not. It's not. This isn't in preparation for becoming more, more self-sufficient, right? Um, so for example, when it comes to, to finances, you could take a simple thing like, you know, uh, you eat out every day for lunch, right? You don't bring your lunch to work. You go out and eat out. So let's say you spend an average of $10 every day, okay? That's $50 a week. 
that is $200 a month, <laughs> you know, that you're spending on, on eating out, which, you know, quite frankly, isn't the most healthiest option. All right. So there's that, there's the health aspect of it. And the financial aspect of it is, is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It'd be so much cheaper for you to be, to go to the grocery store, pick out some healthy options for your lunch and get into a healthy routine and a healthy habit of, of preparing your lunch either the night before or that morning and taking your lunch to work and saving $200 a month, right? And, you know, in the process, probably improving your health. Let's, let's be honest. It's that type of thing, right? Do we need to be spending $7 on a Starbucks coffee every morning? <laughs> you, know, you know, no, you, the answer is no, you don't need that. Is that a little luxury? Is it okay for you to go get a Starbucks once in a while? Absolutely. You know, no big deal. I'm talking about, you know, those daily routines that we get ourselves into and really taking a look at that and really taking a look at the way that we're spending. Um, in regards to refinancing your home or refinancing your car, those big loans that you're thinking, you know, when you're in the mindset of, you know, saving money and becoming more self-sufficient in the year 2020, a lot of people will uh, consider uh, refinancing. Um, be careful when it comes to that. Uh, just make sure that the, the, sometimes they, you know, your, your, your loan officer or your lender is, is not going to focus too much on, on the fees, uh, that are taking place, um, you know, in order to do that refinance and cause and you don't really notice it that much cause it's kind of tacked onto your loan. Uh, make sure that, I mean, that's great if you can, if you can refinance and get, um, you know, a less of an interest rate or lower payments or whatever else, just make sure that the fees that are be, being charged for that refinance don't, you know, go over and above what you're saving, okay? Because that, that kind of, you know, um, defeats the point, right? Doesn't it? So uh, make sure in regards to finances also that you're getting like, a, you know, a couple of different opinions, right? Or a couple of different quotes, right? Uh, do your research. It's really important to follow through and do your research this year. Even if you have professionals like um, pro professional uh, financial advisors or, you know, uh, you know, professional doctors, make sure that you're doing your research and being accountable for those decisions, uh, being accountable for your health, being accountable for your finances. Um, you know, yes, we hire professionals because they are, you know, no more than us. Um, about these things, but it's really important to be informed and, and make sure that those decisions are coming from you and they're not being dictated by someone else, okay? So, yeah, uh, let's talk about health. Health is a big one. <laughs> we all know, like, a, a lot of people have those New Year's resolutions, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in shape, um, I'm gonna go to, you know, the gym, I'm gonna start eating better, uh, eating better is, is, is a great aspiration. It helps us feel better. It gives us more energy. So, you know, think about uh, considering uh, to eat more unprocessed foods this year, right? It doesn't have to be like a specific diet, right? Um, that has a label to it, you know, to simplify all of that. If, if you're eating um, unprocessed natural whole foods, uh, the chances are number one, you're gonna lose weight. And number two, you're gonna feel fantastic. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be so complicated. Uh, we don't have to label everything and try to find the right diet and all that stuff. Just, you know, uh, buy fresh produce, guys, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, buy, buy meat that, you know, that doesn't have a bunch of added antibiotics and hormones and, and stuff like that in there. So uh, you don't have to, you know, get into this little game of, of rules unless that specifically helps you to do that. The other thing is, again, this is about consistency. So I don't necessarily recommend just completely jumping into something and co completely like eliminating uh, any type of, of food group. Um, you know, you want to be diligent where you're, you're slowly starting to work in and allowing your body to get used to a new diet. The same thing goes with exercise, okay, you guys? Um, you probably shouldn't go from like not exercising at all to saying, I'm gonna exercise, you know, seven days a week. Number one, you're gonna get sick. <laughs> Have you guys ever noticed that like when you're like totally like amped up and ready to go to the gym and you start working out and you start working out a lot like a lot of times like people will will get sick and it's just because your body's not used to that. So instead of like putting your body in in, in total shock 
Um, I mean, not to mention that if you haven't been exercising and your diet hasn't been the best, we have that a little bit of a lower immune system going on there. And if you're going to a gym, you know, yes, I understand there's wipes and you can wipe down everything, but you know, there's a lot of bodily liquids going on there. I know that sounds really gross, but uh, gyms uh, can 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 be uh, very uh, virus and bacteria prone just because a lot of people are in there sweating. Uh, we're just going to be frank about it. So, I mean, there's a lot of work you guys can even do if you're just starting out with an exercise routine. Instead of going and spending a bunch of money on a monthly gym, uh, gym membership, we have access to so much information online, you guys, with, with like Pinterest and, and Google and, and everything else. You can simply look up exercises to do at home. I mean, if you're just like really kind of starting to exercise or if you're restarting to ex exercise, a lot of times you don't need equipment. You don't need uh, machines. You can use your own body weight to do those type of exercises and, you know, listen to some music at home and do some cardio. You know, uh, if you are the type of person who has the motivation to exercise at home, I, I know a lot of people, um, you know, including myself, have a hard time. It's like once we get home in the evening, especially like if when if it's dark during the year, it's like who wants to come in a home and exercise? You put some like comfies on and you're done, <laughs> you know, so... If that's the case, and you and and you have a lot of stuff going on at home, and you feel like you need to to you know go somewhere specific for that being your time, so really good to get into to health routines this year. I also suggest um, even if you're feeling great and you have no reason to go to the doctor, I highly suggest you get those preventative annual exams. I highly suggest that you get a basic blood panel done, right? I mean, I went and, and got a basic blood panel done and, you know, I was feeling kind of, you know, I was feeling fine, right? You know, I didn't really have any other issues. And my blood panel came back and it showed that I was like anemic, like really anemic. And I didn't understand that. I didn't really understand what anemia was. I thought that was for like, you know, skinny pale people, you know, but it turns out that, that a, a lot of women suffer with uh, anemia, not even knowing it. Um, and, you know, so I had to start taking iron supplements and, and the, the change that that made in me in regards to my energy level, in regards to the way that I'm able to obtain information is huge. It's phenomenal. And I, I never would have known. I never would have known if my doctor hadn't requested a general bl a blood panel. So, you know, I highly suggest doing something like that. Be preemptive um, with your health care this year. Go in, get checked out, see if you've got all the vitamins um, and that you need and that you're getting um, the nutrition to stay healthy and energetic in order to achieve all of these good goals that are coming in for the year 2020. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about um, 2020 and its effect, its possible effect on relationships. I think that 2020 is gonna be very eye-opening in regards to relationships and here's why everyone's going to have their own specific goals, right? Things that they've been putting off that they suddenly have the energy and the motivation to achieve. So um, in regards to partnerships, it's great to sit down with your partner and, and go over some specific things together and um, you know, see if you're on the same kind of see if you're on the same page as far as you know where you see yourself going as a as a couple as a family within the next ten years. Where where would you like to be? And and see if you can kind of sync up and 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 see where you are together as as partners to see how you're going to to accomplish this and little things that you can do every day to maybe save a little bit more money or you know, uh, just different things that you can do. But, you know, the, the important aspect of that is sitting down and sharing with each other uh, where, and not enough couples do this, right? Where are we going, you know? Um, and what can we do to achieve that? And the reason I say it could be eye-opening is because you and your partner, there might be, you guys might have a completely different idea in mind um, about, where you want to go or where you see yourself. I mean, your partner could be completely satisfied with things just the way they are, but you're wanting a change. You're wanting something more. You're wanting something different. So again, very eye-opening um, to sit down with your partner and go over those things. The other thing that's going to be very eye-opening in the year 2020 is we not only have goals that we want to accomplish 
as a family unit and as a partnership, but we have, again, those, those personal goals that each of us on an individual basis are seeking, uh, seeking to accomplish. So what's interesting about this and what I love about this aspect is it kind of, I really feel like it's kind of gonna break down some of those codependent relationships. I, I tell you what, guys, I have seen such a rise in, in codependent relationships. It's making me really, really nervous. It's not healthy. It's not good. My personal perspective is one of the reasons why people are getting into more and more codependent relationships is because the fact that uh, there's a little bit of a loss of face-to-face of, of -face interaction and communication and community in general, right? Uh, we, we have advanced so far technology-wise. I mean, how often do we really actually even, even talking to someone on the phone, right? A lot of things, even with family, are through, through text, um, stuff like that. So we're missing that, that um, and, and, and definitely not a, kind of a breakdown of commu uh, community because everything's so easy to do technologically. Um, you, there's not as necessarily as much like human uh, interaction, one-on-one -on -one, uh, human interaction, and 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 we're missing that. I'm going to be quite frank with you guys. We are we're missing that. So even though technology is very convenient, I mean it's a way for me to get this video out to, uh, you know, a lot of different people are able to see it. Great. There's great aspects to technology, but we are missing a little bit of that human one-on-one -on -one contact, and it's it's essential. Um, so what happens with codependent relationships? is we, you know, we don't have a bunch of like one-on-ones as much as, as we did before. And so we are having this one-on-one -on -one interaction on a regular basis with one specific person, right? That's where we're, that, and that, that specific person is, is feeding that interaction that, and that support that we would have been getting from a group of people. Now, now it's just one person um, that we have that daily in-person um, interaction with. And so it's very easy for two individuals to rely on each other so, so much because it's like, you know, that's, that's, that's what you just do. Right. And it's easy to do that in, in their, their lives. And, and I understand when you're in a partnership, of course, your lives are combined and there's compromise and working together and you're living your life together, but it's, it's so, so important to keep those individual goals and those individual things that, that, make you who you are. I mean, so many couples get so wrapped up in each other and, and, and what's going on in each other's lives that they forget, literally forget who they are and, and what their niche is in the world, what they're here to do, um, you know, and they forget themselves, you know, and it's so, it's really unhealthy. Um, there's usually in these codependent relationships, one person who is a whole lot more needy uh, than the other person. So for instance, if one person does have a little bit more individuality, knows where they wanna go, has the energy to accomplish those things, and you have another partner who isn't quite so sure of themselves and, and doesn't really know what they wanna do with life and doesn't understand what's go what, what, what they want or what kind of future they see for themselves, they are more likely to latch on uh, to the person who produces that type of energy because they don't have that for themselves. And it's not fair to either, to either side because, you know, for, for the person um, who, you know, who is trying to get things done and, and does have personal aspirations for themselves, they're so busy walking on eggshells and taking care of the other partner and everything revolves around the other partner that they don't take the time and the initiative to do those things for themselves, okay? And it's not healthy for the other person who's codependent because they need to be able to stand up on their own and come up with their own energy and come up with their own solutions. You know, you can't, here's the thing. If you go into a relationship or if you are in a relationship relying on your partner to make you happy, to complete you in some way, you're gonna be sorely disappointed, okay? Because that's too much to ask of someone. It's not that I'm saying like, you know, as a partnership, 
the the thing about it is you're supposed to lift each other up, right? You're supposed to support each other. But you're also supposed to be able to stand up on your own two feet because your partner also needs you to be the strong one once in a while, right? Your partner, even though they might seem very strong, also needs to be able to lean on you. So it's very mutual. And so it's really important to get into a relationship being a fulfilled person on an individual basis. I want to touch on something else really quick while, while we're on this subject. Moms. <laughs> Moms, you guys are really, really bad. Not all of you. That's, that's being stereotypical. But, you know, moms are nurturers. That's what they do, right? They're always taking care of everybody. Please, please, please set aside some time for yourself this year to create some of your own individual goals. And when I'm talking about goals, I'm not talking about goals for your family. I'm not talking about goals for your kids. I'm not talking about goals for your spouse. I am talking about specific goals that are specifically for you and have absolutely nothing to do with anyone else. Okay? I hope that you guys are hearing me when I say that. It's very important. I'm noticing a lot of, um, you know, people around my age and friends my age are having their kids are going off to college and they are like having some serious like empty nester syndrome. They don't even know what to do with themselves because their whole life has revolved around other people so much to the fact that they don't even know who they are anymore when their children are not in the picture. Okay. Take care of yourself because here's the thing, as a nurturer, if you're constantly giving, 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 and you're not taking time to refill your cup and, and refill your energy and refill your creativity, eventually, you know, it's almost like there's nothing left to give, right? You're depleted. So in order for you to be the type of, of wife and mother that you want to be and, and really, you know, take care of people the way that you need and want to take care of them, you've got to take care of yourself. Super important. Here's the other, and that's what's going to lead into the other eye-opening thing when in regards to relationships. Especially, especially if you are in a codependent relationship, right? So you need, you and your partner need to make time and compromise in regards to personal goals that you have for yourself. An example, right? Um, someone, one of the one partner decides, hey, you know, I really need to work on on my my fitness. I need to start exercising. I need to schedule in some time for myself to do this, right? Well, you know, if you have kids or you have a partner, that takes compromise, right? Because it might change the schedule a little bit. Say you want to go to the gym three days a week, right? At right after work, okay? So that might um, require your partner to uh, maybe pick up the kids or, you know, maybe get dinner started or something like that. Something that allows you to be able to go to the gym three days a week, okay? So there's a little bit of compromise there and, and vice versa because, you know, your partner I, hopefully will have their, their own things that they wanna do as well. So it's gonna take a little bit of compromise on your part for your partner to be able to fit that in. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the eye-opening part of it. Here's the twist. You can, your partner can either be really supportive and be excited of the fact that you want to, you know, do something healthy for yourself and they're willing to compromise with you and they're, they're willing to do what it takes for you to meet your goals and uplift you and be what a partner is essentially supposed to be, a partner, right? Or <laughs> the flip side, especially in codependent relationships, is that you are going to find that your partner is very unsupportive, that they don't like it because it interferes with their schedule. Um, they don't like the fact that you have something going on that has nothing to do with them. That's a very codependent thing, right? If you start to notice that your partner is overreacting because maybe uh, you decided to go back to school this year, you've been wanting to go back to school and you're spending a little bit more time on homework and you're having to spend a little bit more time going to classes, um, and that time is specifically for you because you've decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and finish that degree I've been wanting to, to finish, right? If you have a partner that is not supportive and that's complaining that you're not spending enough time with your family and that you're not spending enough time with, with uh, him or her, 
you know, uh, it's going to be kind of eye opening, right? Um, in, in regards to someone just being a little bit selfish that way, because they're used to getting all of your attention, they're used to getting all of your energy, so to speak, right? And that change uh, is going to make them very uncomfortable, right? That's a that's like a control issue a little bit. So keep your eye open for stuff like that. Keep your eye open. Um, just take a look at the way that your your partner's um, reacting to some of the goals that you're bringing in. Like I said, I feel like this is going to be a very big exposure year for codependent relationships, like where you're like, whoa, something's, uh, something's a little bit off here, you know, uh, which quite frankly is good. I, I, I'm sorry, it's not like I'm wanting anyone to have relationship problems or breakups or anything like that. I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but... I think there's going to be a little bit of a realistic aspect um, come in this year in regards to, you know, equality in relationships and what's fair, right? Um, yeah, so so super important to focus on that if you're dating this year, if you want to, if you if you want to find a partner this year, if you're single and you're looking um, for a partner, uh, again, just make sure that you and that partner, whatever kind of relationship that you're getting into, um, you know, have kind of similar goals and aspirations that that you're wanting to reach towards this year, uh, because again, it's going to be very difficult if you have a partner where those goals don't align. Uh, it's going to cause some some conflict. Um, if you're single and you're not looking for a relationship, this is a, an excellent year to focus, to really focus in on things that you've been wanting to do on your health, on your finances, and, and really working on fulfilling yourself. And so that way, when you are ready to get into a relationship, that you come to that relationship as a whole person. Um, let's dip back into finances again. I forgot to mention to you guys, uh, not a good year for gambling, not a good year for risky stock investments, uh, not a good year for risky anything. Uh, it's just a, a good year to settle in. Property. Property is another earth type of thing, right? Um, so not a good year to necessarily say, oh, you know, I'm sick of my yard. It doesn't look good. I'm going to hire a landscaping company to come in and redo the entire yard. If you already have the funds set aside to do that, and this has been a goal for a while, and it's not going to affect you financially in any other way, go for it. But if it's like a spur of the moment type of, oh, let's have someone come in and just redo all of this, right? Especially if you're going to put it on any kind of a credit uh, not a good idea. This is more about like hard work and working with what you have. So if you don't like your yard, I, I can tell you again, there's so much information available on the internet in regards to DIY projects. Um, you know, uh, specifically there are so many different materials that you can buy that are, are cheaper and it's about putting in, in the physical work and the physical labor, right? There are so many things that we can do to improve our property and do it ourselves. And maybe it takes a little bit longer. Maybe we have to, you know, put in more we, uh, work on the weekend on specific things, uh, watch sales, you know, on specific, uh, products and stuff like that. Um, you know. Uh, watch videos on lawn care and, and, and specific plants or whatever that thrive in, in your zone, in your area. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of that yourself, guys. It, it's all about really taking um, what's available to you and, and working with it. Again, um, if, if you're trying to up the value of your property and you decide, I'm going to go get granite countertops, right? Make sure you, you're, again, you're really taking a look at every aspect of that. Take a look at the comps in your area, at what the other houses in your area are selling for, because you might decide to put all new high-end appliances and granite, granite countertops, and you're thinking that's going to like up the, the equity of your house or your property so much, but in reality, your, your property value is also very restricted to what the, the house is selling around you are. 
you know. So again, if these are things that you've already put money aside for, you've already saved for, it's, it's a plan, it's something that you're already doing and you know that it's not going to put any kind of a financial burden on you, and, or, or you're planning on staying in this house and it's just something that you want to do for, you know, because you want that, because that's a personal thing that you're wanting, go for it. I'm just saying be a little bit frugal this year. Be a little bit smart about what you're doing and wearing, uh, where you're spending your money. So again, uh, really, really dynamic year to um, really get some things done. And let me tell you what, when you start all these healthy daily routines, um, and you see yourself succeeding at them, your self-esteem is just going to like go through the ceiling, you guys. When you're able to, to tackle something you've been wanting to do and you have the motivation and you put in the consistency and the hard work and you start to see some of those things come into to fruition, it's, there's something that's so, so rewarding about that and so satisfying about that on such a deep level. So I, I highly encourage you, and I, like I have been encouraging you guys for the last couple of months to take a look at what's no longer serving you, right, in the past year. Focus on what you want more of and also add to that looking towards a little bit longer term. Where do I want to see myself? And what are the daily things that I can incorporate in my life in order to get there? I have to mention that this type of energy brings a lot of change, okay? I know. <laughs> I know that some of us aren't the best with change. It's intimidating. It's scary. We don't know what lies ahead. You guys, this year has a lot of change coming in and that is going to continue. That is going to progress. So try not to try to, you're going to see a lot of change going on this year all around you, right? Just in society in general, try to, to remain focused and positive about your, your personal goals that you're pursuing and don't get so caught up in fear. All right. And the fear of change and the fear of what you see happening around you. Um, and, and the fear of, of what's going to happen in, in your personal life, because that, that disempowers you. It disempowers you. Um, and so for those of us who, who have difficulty with change and who like to just keep things the way they are, this could potentially be a very uh, difficult year. Um, again, for those of you who have trouble planning and sticking to a routine and this, you could see, you could even see some type of crisis this year. Here's the flip side of this energy um, in regards to, you know, relationships and re in, in regards to being spontaneous and being frivolous. Um, you could see, you could possibly see some type of crisis for that type of lifestyle this year. So that's the flip side of this energy. If you are, you know, kind of fly by the seat of your pants and, and you're not planning anything, you could feel like you're just running on a treadmill this year and nothing's getting done, okay? Because this year is really focused on putting in the work and, and, and making the plan and sticking to it and, and that consistency, all right? Um, you know, again, a lot of change, you know, just, just try to, just try to deal with it. You guys, it's going to happen regardless of whether you're prepared for it or you like it or not. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just one of those years and it's, it's a good time that this is coming in, that this is, is, is preparing us. There's one of the reasons there, there's a, a very good reason why this energy is coming in and it's coming in at the perfect time at the, at the, the beginning of this decade. Okay. What this energy is trying to help us with is it's trying to help us become more self-sufficient, okay? There's, there's an independence a little bit to this energy, and it's all in preparation, okay? We have, at the end of this year, at the end of 2020-20, uh, um, we have uh, Jupiter and Saturn uh, moving into the sign of Aquarius, so what does this mean? Uh, basically, let me, let me break it down for you this way. Uh, for 200 years now, uh, we have had these planets be in, in Earth signs, all right? Um, 
in Taurus or, you know, these, these are, and so the focus has been, or where the power has been for the last 200 years has been on earthly things like, uh, you know, machinery and coal and fuel. And that, that has been where the money has, uh, and, the, and the power, you know, has, has, you know, been in those kind of industries, right? Um, we are moving into uh, Aquarius, um, at the end of 2020, you might not see changes right away, but I have a feeling, you know, it's going to happen pretty quickly. So what that means, um, in the next 30 years or so, we are going to see more of a breakdown of hierarchies, uh, right? Uh, higher governing, uh, bodies or corporations, right? Or, you know, just, uh, there's going to be a, a breakdown of that, you know, cause, uh, cause the people are going to, to demand it, right? Um, people just in general, like planetary wise are getting really sick and tired of being dictated to, okay? <laughs> you know, following rules and regulations or even societal standards that really have nothing to do with them, right? Hey, there's this rule and regulation and it's in this in place for for a certain reason and I get that but you know it's really not me it's really not doesn't really do anything for me it's not good for me and I, I don't want to do this okay uh, so you're going to start to see people in the next 30 years really kind to try to move away um, from from hierarchies that are, are constricting their freedom and constricting their ability to live the life uh, the way that they want to live it, okay? Um, so what happens uh, when, you know, these hierarchies or these corporations, large corporations start to get the feeling that people are doing that, that people are, are moving you know, are, are moving away from that. And they're just kind of like, you know, not paying attention to it anymore. Uh, what you have, <laughs> what happens is you have those uh, hierarchies and those corporations and those higher powers really, really starting to, you know, put in even stronger regulations, even stronger rules because they feel like they're losing control. Um, so we're going to start to see this, like say, so if you work for um, a, a big corporation, you're going to start to see, you know, uh, your your corporation start to, to really uh, put some high standards and regulations and, you know, really do this, do this, do this. And what's interesting about it, and, and this year in particular, it's going to start like this in, in uh, 2020, where people are just going to say, you know, I, I, I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to look for, for a way to see if I can make some extra money. Maybe I'm going to do a side job or, you know, maybe I'm going to take whatever my hobby is and, and however I'm being creative. And, and maybe I'll make a little bit of money um, on it on the side, right? Uh, you're going to see a lot of that this year. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs coming into the scene, uh, very, very much, uh, Capricornian energy. And, uh, you know, as it turns out, I mean, maybe that little hobby that they thought was only going to be a little bit of, uh, extra money with it, with the work and the diligence and the consistency that they're putting into that this year could eventually turn up to be their like source income right? Where they don't even have to work for a corporation anymore. They can work for themselves and work their own schedule and run their business the way that they want to run, run their business without having to be dictated to. So you're going to see a rise in uh, entrepreneurship uh, for sure, um, especially in the next, uh, next dec uh, decade. Because again, um, people are just kind of getting tired of being told what to do. They want to live their lives by their, their own standards. You know, we're starting to, as a society in general, think a little bit more outside of the box, right? What works for you might not work for me. Um, you know, and it's, especially when it comes to those societal norms, like, oh, you know, by a certain age, you need to be married and, you know, have kids and the white picket fence. And some people are like, mm, you know what, I don't want kids. Or, you know what, I just want a little cabin out in the middle of nowhere. You know, that's how, that's what I want. Or, you know, I'm I actually, I'm pretty, I'm okay being single. You know, uh, you, people are just, you know, they, 
I feel like enough people are living like this where you don't have those as much of a societal pressure on you to be living your life a certain way in a way that doesn't particularly work for you. So, um, you know, we're going to see a lot of that uh, in the next 30 years as we as we go into the age of Aquarius. OK, so this year. Um, has a lot to do with the preparation of being more sufficient, you know, not needing creditors, uh, not needing loans because we've figured out to live uh, within our means and not live over our means in a way that we can we can afford to live simply and live happily and, and not owe our life to a corporation or a company or a bank or, or anyone else, okay? So really exciting times coming up. Again, a lot of change, um, a lot of things being brought up, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, things that we've been telling ourselves that are incorrect or just negligent are, are going to change and we're going to be changing our perspectives on what we feel is a healthy way for us to move forward into the next decade. Really exciting stuff. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get to your monthly readings for the month of January. Capricorn how are you guys happy January happy new year and happy birthday what a fantastic year for Capricorn oh my goodness I mean there's not too often that a sign has all these planets and all this action Oh my gosh, you guys, in the year of 2020, everything's Capricorn. We started out at the end of December, like coming into the new year with a Capricorn eclipse. All right, you guys are right in your element this year. You've got Jupiter in your sign all year long. It's the planet of abundance. It's the, the planet of, you know, uh, bringing things in you know, initiating things, expanding things. Ugh, it's awesome. I'm really, really excited for you guys. Capricorn, you guys deserve it. You are hard workers. You're consistent. You have a plan and you just continue to, to chip away at it and until you get where you want to be. And you guys deserve this year. I'm really, really excited. So I did something a little bit different this month because the, the intro uh, was a little bit long. <laughs> so to cut down time, I went ahead and pre-shuffled your cards and I pulled your cards for the month of January. So without further ado, let's take a look and see what's coming in for the first month of 2000, 2020. First card out, we have the Queen of Cups. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love the Queen of Cups. You know, the Queen of Cups is, she's a very emotionally content queen, all right? This is a card about being emotionally fulfilled, being able to be at peace and be in touch with your emotions. This is all about having a full cup, right? A lot of times this takes a lot of, uh, you know, interior work, right? some self work uh, work to get to this point but you know what in the month of january you guys you have a full cup you're really feeling that love you're really feeling content within um it just feels good all right you guys are full you're full of those good emotions mm. i love it i mean just look at i just look at the picture i mean i, I guess the picture just helps represent Look at how content she is. Look at how fulfilled she is. She's so at peace. She's so serene. I absolutely love that 
for the initial card for you guys. Underneath that, you've got another cups card, cups representing emotion, right? Two of cups. Two of cups is the soulmate card. Ah, so exciting. You guys, I, I mean, if, if you are single and you're not coupled, you could be meeting your soul your soulmate. You really could. Um, if you are coupled, uh, you're just realizing it's such a close union there. You really feel connected with your partner. This is someone who like literally completes you. Okay. Um, hmm. There's another aspect of this card as well. This card can also represent being fulfilled within yourself, emotionally fulfilled within yourself, pulling together different aspects of yourself that, that complete you, right? Being in touch with yourself, knowing who you are and where you are emotionally. And you know, if, if you are, if you do that, have that kind of emotional balance within yourself, you are gonna, you know, be the queen of cups. If you can find that balance, if you can really be that in touch with yourself emotionally, that's very, very powerful, very powerful. Next you have the king of swords. This um, king of swords, uh, any, any king of any suit is the master of that. So if we take swords, swords is um, like our mental. It also stands for our, our ability to communicate what is on our minds. So the king of swords is the master of that. All right. He's not someone who uh, necessarily uh, has issues with um, overthinking things right? Or, or stress or anxiety, you know, mentally, he's just very sound. He knows how to control those things. He's very focused. He knows what his goals are and he goes for them. In regards to communication, he's a no bullshitter. He gets right to the point. He's very good at communicating what's going on in here and what's going on in here. Now, this could be you. This could be you and, and <laughs> amazing Capricorn, because if this is you and you have that kind of uh, mental balance and control uh, this month, as well as being the queen of cups and having that emotional contentment, wow, you are really, really starting the year off good. Yes. It could also be another person that, that uh, plays a prominent role in your life right now. It could be an air sign right? Could be an air sign that, that isn't playing some kind of important role in your life. Very well could be someone with those kind of attributes. It doesn't necessarily have to be an air sign. It could just be someone that has those type of um, personality traits, okay? Underneath the King of Swords, you have the Knight of Pentacles, I think of all the knights, this is my favorite one. So knights are typically, um, you know, they're they're fast moving energy because what do knights do? They charge into battle. They get right down to it, you know. Uh, so knights are usually represent a, a quick moving energy, and um, you know some kind of message or offering coming through. Uh, the Knight of Pentacles. The reason he's my favorite is because of all the knights. I would have to say that he's the slowest. And in his case, that's not a bad thing. Why? Because he's a meticulous planner. He's a meticulous planner. He doesn't just go willy-nilly charging in a battle. He observes what's going on. He makes a crucial plan. And then he takes action. Okay? He's not in a rush. Uh, Pentacles is, uh, is your suit, Capricorn. You know, is that earth, that tangible. Knight of Pentacles, um, you know, could be some kind of offer of finance or property or career coming into you. Next card out, you have the Strength card, Major Arcana. 
Beautiful, beautiful card yet again. Yet again, Capricorn. Your reading is blowing me away. I'm just wondering what the heck is going on here. <laughs> oh, strength card. This is about inner strength. It's about perseverance. It's about really being touch with, in touch with who you are. You know, when you're really in touch with who you are, you have the ability to do anything. Okay? It's that inner knowledge. There's no doubt here. There's only calm persistence. Acknowledgement. Beautiful. Hmm. You guys are so strong. You're so strong in the month of January. Woo! Happy birthday yet again. <laughs> you guys are just coming in like just emotionally fulfilled completely in touch with yourself clear of thought clear of mind knowing what you want knowing who you are you're definitely definitely in your power this month capricorn i'm so excited last but not least ace of rods yes yes Aces are fantastic cards. They are fresh new opportunities coming in. The suit of rods represents passion and creativity and action, right? What is coming in for you guys in the month of January, Capricorn? There's some kind of offer, creative, passionate, everything that you're ready for from the looks of it, which interesting. Now let me switch these up really quick here. These were, the cards were right next to each other just like this. Interesting that the Knight of Pentacles is bringing you some kind of message. Some kind of tangible earthly message in regards to finances, career, property. And then you've got the Ace of Rods right next to it. So it's some kind of new creative endeavor something that ignites passion and creativity within you a new start a new beginning yay talk about a way to start out the year capricorn amazing i love it you guys you deserve this reading you really do good for you good for you for having that internal strength and that perseverance to get to this point i'm really excited for you guys so I'm going to do something, again, a little bit different this month. Um, the Guidance card, I'm going to be using a deck called Earth Magic. And the reason I decided to use this deck is in, uh, you know, celebration for the fact that we have so much Earth energy, so much Capricorn uh, energy for 2020. So I thought, why not start out the year uh you know with a dex like that specifically focuses on earth so i'm going to pull a card for you guys i'm going to read directly from the book when i when we figure out what cards you're going to get um because i just love the author and the way that he describes things it's beautiful so let's see what we pulled desert vision quest nice all right let's go ahead i'm going to just grab a drink really quick let's go ahead and see what that means bear with me there we are so first it's going to describe the image on the card In this arid climate zone that we call desert, images shift and change throughout the day, yet always remain a sharp and defined presence. Those hardy species of flora and fauna that have found a home in the desert have adapted over eons to relative harshness that's a strong characteristic of these lands. Throughout history, we've passed down many stories of people wandering the desert, often there about religious figures and ascended masters 
who had journeyed there and returned to their people with remarkable visions. The desert is an ideal place to seek a vision or more accurately to allow a vision to come to you. The quiet and peace of such an environment is conductive to the solitude required to have this type of profound experience. Spending time in this region without the usual encounterments of the civilized world can present survival challenges or at least seem to. And this could rightfully be called a spirit quest where through steadiness in this seemingly bleak environment, it becomes possible to receive direct guidance from spirits, spirit internally and in the world around you. Wow, beautiful. So here's the actual um, advice when it comes to this card, Capricorn. A vision quest is a process whereby you spend a few days in the wilderness alone. Typically you carry only water and some sacred items with you and you spend most of the time praying or meditating. Many who have completed a vision quest assert that it is a powerful and even life-changing experience and report vivid and profound revelations. It is said that the desert does not lie. So partaking in this can help you discover the truth about your purpose, or at least give you some clues. It is time for you to go on a vision quest designate a place in nature in which to dwell whether for a couple of hours or a few days spend the majority of your time while there praying and meditating it is best to be in a location where you can truly find solitude even if it is in a quiet corner of a park for an afternoon wherever you go take your question concern or challenge with you into prayer or meditation Allow it to float around in your consciousness and watch what shows up. This is one of the more powerful cards. By drawing it, whatever other messages you may have received are amplified threefold. Wow. Ah, full body chills, full body chills, Capricorn. Did you just hear what it said? I mean, if, if seriously, if you could even amplify the, the energy of the cards that were already pulled, I mean, I can't even imagine. Oh, you guys are really connected with yourself this month. And, and this is telling you to even take more opportunity to become connected with yourself, you know, to find those truths that you're searching for. Uh, you guys will have the ability to do this. You know, so if you do spend a little bit of, of quiet time out away somewhere where you're not going to be interrupted, where you can really, really dive deep. Oh, I think that it's going to be amazing, amazing for you guys. Mm, I love it. I love this for you guys, Capricorn. I'm so excited. I want to let you guys know if, if um, you know, you need any extra guidance or you know, uh, anything. I am starting to do uh, personal readings effective January 1st. The information on how to order that personal reading is going to be in the about section on my homepage, on my YouTube homepage. Um, so feel free to check that out. Uh, but you know what, you guys, honestly, you're right, right on track um, for this month and right on track for 2020. And, and, and I'm sincerely, sincerely happy for you guys. I love you so much. I'll see you next time, okay?